I'm the chair of the Community Promotions and Engagement Committee, and we are convening our, is it March 17th? Yes, our March 17th, 2022 meeting of the Community, Compo Com Community Promotions and Engagement Committee. So, um, Catherine, can you confirm uh, that the notice of the meeting has been posted and is, as is appropriate? And that are the other requirements of the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act have been satisfied. They have. Okay. Um, the first thing on our agenda is the minutes from our February 17th, 2022 meeting. Uh, may I have a motion for approval of those minutes? Well, I'll make a motion. Good job, Jim. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, thank you. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns regarding those minutes? Hearing none. Um, I will, hearing none, now I can call for a vote to approve these minutes. Please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Okay. And I skipped right over the roll call. <laughs> <laughs> I can see here we have Sharon and Jean and Larry and Kim, I believe, was going to try to phone in. Catherine, has she phoned in or no? Okay. Um, and Jean Westberg is in traveling right now, might be at an airport to phone in, but she wasn't sure. So we do have a quorum, however, so we can continue the meeting. And I apologize for forgetting that. Okay. <laughs> Forgiven. <laughs> Forgiven. Okay. Um, so that we have no real old business. We have some few business items at the end that we can talk about. Um, but our main item for talking today are the community promotion grant applications that you all received in your packet on Monday. Thank you, Catherine, for taking care of that for me. Um, and the first one on our agenda is the Seabrook Island Birders. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Mercer. I'm on the board of the Seabrook Island Birders, and I wrote the grant, so they've asked me to represent the organization. Um, we've, we've asked for um, a grant for a variety of things. I do want to point out that of the six things we've asked for, five of them actually do not help the members, individual members at all. They are projects the organization has taken on um, over and above what we would normally do for our members. This is things to help the community. So that would be the Seabrook Island uh, Shorebird Stewards and the Bluebird Box um, are the two major projects that are represented here. The one that actually helps the individuals is our stipend for speakers. In this particular part of the request, what we're doing is we four, five, six times a year, it changes from year to year. We try to have guest speakers come in. We have one coming in on Tuesday, which is the um, do a live animal, live bird show, and their fee is $500. Um, we charge members a whopping $10 a year for membership. And some of that money comes out of there. Um, but we also ask people to support the speakers. So what we did was $500 or $5 per person who tends. We expect to have less than 100 people. So the Seabrook Island Burgers will make up that difference. And we're asking for some help to do that. Um, so that's the one that actually helps the individual people who are members. The rest of them are projects. The Seabrook Island um, Shorebird Stewards, as you may well know, is people out educating visitors mostly. 68% of the people we talked to last year were visitors. Visitors to Seabrook Island, educating them about how important Seabrook Island is, and in particular the North Beach area for bird habitat and for bird safety to protect the birds in the wintering season and then during the nesting season. To do that, um, we need to schedule program, schedule people's times. So the Wildlife Management, or Wildlife Preservation Services uh, maintains the website with the calendar, allows our volunteers to sign up for that. So we look for help to pay for that. We also need some equipment. The um, 
we're this year, last year we didn't do it because of COVID, but this year we're going to be putting out our, our um, the spotting scope and tripods that were on loan by um, DCNR or DNR. Um, the spotting scope is still working. The, their tripod is not working as well as we want. So right now we're using an individual tripod. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to buy a tripod in order to replace the one that the individuals give the individual back their tripod um, and have one that's working new and working. The other thing with this tele, the scope, the spotting scope, we bought, would like to buy or have bought a Pelican box to store it into the uh, dock boxes out on Boardwalk One to keep it safe um, from water and sand and things like that. So that's the other expense there. Um, then the final one is to be determined because we expect the signage to wear out, bleach out, go, you know, get worn out. Um, so we may, we suspect that we're going to need to replace that. So we're, and these are all educational signages um, for the, to educate visitors. So this is what we're looking for. The Bluebird Box is another project that we're doing and the Seabrook Island Birders have been doing it for many, many years. The repairs in the past have been coming out of individual pockets. Um, so what we'd like to do is to be able to um, pay for some of those repairs through this grant so that the boxes are um, new and up to date or at least in good working order for the bluebirds. So that's our request. Um, I'll entertain any questions. I'd just like to point out that I made an error on the agenda page. Um, the applicant is only asking for $1,480, and I had $1,500, so I just wanted to clarify that. You, you can give us $15 if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that does bring up a question, for example, with the Bluebird box repairs. If the repairs come more than $85 and the signs come less, would we be able to shift, add, take one stay within the $1,500 or 1480 and move that around? Is that something that's permitted through the grant? My feeling is, and I will open this to committee, but basically my feeling is yes, that you went, if you were slightly over on one part of a project and less on another, our funding that we would be granting would be the $1,480. And that if you stayed within, your receipts stayed within these items, we would be okay with that. I'm, I'm, not sure. I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with that. Um, and, and actually I'm sort of surprised um, that, and wouldn't be surprised if you find that the signs are more having been past president of Singh, um, I know what, what the, the signs can cost. So, uh, so maybe I should have the Singh people talk to you and find out what you're doing in order to be able to get them fixed for only $150. I was, my, and this is just an open conversation, when you had such a low price for the signage, I was assuming those were the little signs up along the dunes that say, oh, okay. don't, yeah. You're not talking about the big information The nesting signs. area signs and okay. not the big signs. I understand. Assume. But I'm Actually, not sure. The, the nesting area signs and the area protection signs are put in by, uh, SCDNR, and it's not one of our costs. The signs that we're doing are educational signs. So if you meet our people out on the beach with their cart, you'll see there's these little um, 18, um, okay. 20, 15 signs which have information about the birds and stuff like that. They're all brand new. We suspect that some of them may get damaged over the season, so we'd like to have the ability to replace them. Um, wow. So that's so it's not I a very fancy you. sign. I was thinking you were you were talking about the uh, the large signs that are on along the boardwalks that are uh, those big informational ones. Okay. No, my experience is they need the entire grant to do something like that. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Would it be appropriate for us to amend their application? Just add twenty bucks and bring it up to the, the maximum allowable without having to come back for. 20 bucks. I don't think it would be appropriate for you to amend it. I think they can ask for 20 additional dollars okay. for something and you can approve it or not approve it. Okay. Yeah. 
And so what I'm hearing, just to be clear, what I'm hearing is that um, if we need another $20 for something, we would come back to the, the council and ask for that. No, if, if you want to just increase one of your line items by $20, <laughs> if this uh, committee approves the full amount, they would approve $1,500 instead of $1,480. Right now. Oh, should I resubmit the application? Uh, I don't think you need to resubmit. If you just want to take uh, your, your box repair, which is the lowest one, and just make it $105, um, that'll bring you I would appreciate that. I would appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> but you can select whichever one you want to put your extra twenty dollars. I just picked the lowest one. It's that's fine. That would be appropriate. Um, do you, does anyone else have any other questions about where the money is going? Yeah, it's well well laid out. Okay. No, I think I think the burgers is great service to the island. I appreciate everything that they're doing. I love the little blueberry boxes. Seeing all the activity in the spring. Okay. Well, thank you. Right. Joe, is it appropriate that we vote yeah, each one as they come up, or do we then listen to review each one and then vote? I would probably listen to all of them and then circle back and vote on it. Okay, that was my thought too. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, I want to thank you so much for helping us with this. It was very informative. Um, and I agree with um, Sharon here that I do enjoy um, and have spoken to the people, the birder people on the beach. And back when you had the scope up, I used to watch, go and look through it. So it was very helpful. Um, and I commend you for using BNH Photo because they are the least expensive place to get something from, <laughs> having bought thousands and thousands of dollars from them. Okay. So we'll move on to our next um, applicant, which would be Backpack Buddies, Seabrook Island. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lynn Baker. And I appreciate okay. the opportunity to come forward and present a uh, application for a grant. Um, many of you probably know about Backpack Buddies because it was formed in 2014 and has been going strong since then. Um, I had just joined the board this year. Bill Google and his wife, Pat, have been instrumental in making this successful the last few years. And they have now started uh, moving away from some of the day to day kind of operation uh, and, and bringing in more board members to do these things. So. I appreciate that opportunity. But Backpack Valley's mission isn't about the island as much as it's about John's Island and helping the community around us. And it's all about providing weekend food to local hungry school children to ensure those children, when they return to school on Monday, they're not hungry. So what happens is most of these schools are Title I schools. So the children get breakfast and lunch for free during the week. But on the weekend, because they're, under, they're, they're uh, under the poverty line, they really do not have food available to them. So our, uh, our mission is to provide them that food. So the, the, they receive a backpack on a Friday, they are able to take it home, have nutritious food over the weekend, and so then they can come back uh, ready to go to school. Presently, we were feeding 359 children. Uh, last year, it was uh, 179 uh, children. So we've actually increased by about two times the number of children. The way that the children are selected is the school teachers, principals, and guidance counselors are the ones who reach out to the family and make decisions on which families need this food. So we don't provide food for everybody, all the children at the schools. Um, the, the money we're asking for goes towards buying the food, not anything else. So our overall budget, when we look at it, 95% of it goes directly to buying food. Only about 5% goes to other things. Those, the majority of those two other things is insurance to cover the workers. And also we do this Gorski challenge each year and we're doing it right now and it's in progress. Uh, we actually pay for an ad in the Seabrooker which costs $1,200. 
So those two things make up the majority of money not spent directly on food. And that money will come directly out of the Gorski Challenge, not out of what you got, the grant we get here. So all the money we were able to get from this committee and on the Seabrook Island would go directly to food. Um, <clears throat> it's an all volunteer organization. We have about 103 volunteers. They're all Seabrookers. They come in and help with the um, sorting the food, packing the lunches, and then delivering the food to the three schools we support. We, just, we support Mount Zion, and we support with about 149 students and bags. We support Lambs Elementary, which is up in North Charleston with 140 of, uh, food bags. And we also support St. John's High School. We don't supply bags to the high school. There is a sort of a storeroom up there where we stock the storeroom with food and items and the students who are, have been identified that come into there once a week to get things off the storeroom. So it's not really a bag as much as supplying food overall. So throughout the year, uh, we will support doing, only during the school year, August through May. Again, sometimes if a weekend is three to four days, we'll pack more food for that weekend. Uh, so a little more nutritious information. We also work very closely with Kiowa Women's Foundation because they run Kiowa, Kiowa Backpack Buddies. Um, so they're in conjunction with us. So as we're doing a Gorski Challenge, if you've seen some of those notices, it's really about both organizations where we're collecting money. The reason we're coming forward for a grant is because the Sea Island Hunger Awareness Group ran a, a major drive in December, we're really concerned we may or may not be able to make the numbers this year for the Gorski Gors Challenge. So we're really trying hard to make that up. Um, and it's never really a guarantee that we'll get that um, or have that going. Gorski last year opted to say he wasn't gonna run it again. And then um, he decided at the last minute he would continue to run it. So, and we used to do this in conjunction with the Chile cook-off. Um, but as you know, with the pandemic, we had to shut that down. So we have an overall budget this year of $75,000. That's up from about 45,000 last year because of the increased number of students we, we feed. We're gonna pack about 14,000 bags this school year to give to children. Um, the cost per bag is about $7 and the cost per child for the school year is about $209. So for the entire school year. So we're coming to you to ask for some grant money of $1,000 uh, to help us out with Backpack Buddy Seabrook Island. Any questions? I just want to say, uh, Lynn, that this is an organization that is very dear to my heart. I think I've been uh, involved in it since it started. I've been on the board, I've packed, I have delivered food, and next Thursday I'll be helping set up. So I think this is a very worthwhile endeavor that y'all have taken on. And there are so many needy kids out there. So I thank you for the hard work you're doing. Thank you. And thank you for volunteering and doing some of the packing and setup. I appreciate it. That's my pleasure. <laughs> I have one question, and it's uh, basically you. One of the schools you uh, mentioned that you give is Lambs Elementary, and I know that's in North Charleston. Um, what about the middle school here in on John's Island? Yes, the Kiowa Backpack Buddies or Backpack Buddies Kiowa Island. Uh, supports the middle school and Angel Oak. So they supply it to those. So Joanne, um, a number of years ago, uh, realized there was also a need off, off island and uh, began to support lamb. So there's a need. And so we're supporting that even if it's not the, on the island. So 60% of our um, food goes to on island. And we're reluctant to change that because the children still need the food, whether we want to do it or not. And so if we back out, they're not going to get that. I understand. Any other questions? Can I ask one? Yes, you may. How does this program benefit um, Seabrook Allen? Only th through the contributions we give and the recognition that we're giving back 
to John's Island and the children on John's Island with our funds that we're being community focused. Wow. Yeah. And it supports the 103 volunteers on Seabrook Island that believe in this and are doing the packing and shipping. You know, they're Seabrook Islanders and so they live here. So we're supporting them to do that job. Yeah, I, I, I would, Lynn, I, I would agree. I mean, I want to just say that I, I wholeheartedly agree with Sharon's comment. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful um, effort that so many Seabrookers <clears throat> have been involved in. And it's so needed um, throughout the, through our, uh, out our area, um, particularly on Johns Island. Um, and certainly the impact of COVID um, has, has increased uh, the need of support um, to the so many needy families that, that are um, residents around us. Um, I, I do struggle with this only from the, only from the perspective of, of looking at the guidelines for this particular grant program and uh, following Joe's question of how it fits in the parameters of this grant. And I struggle with that because it's such a valuable uh, and needed project. Mm -hmm. And um, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, how, how do the rest of you feel about that? I, I agree with you, yeah. Jane. I, would struggle, I struggle with it too. Um, we, when this grant was set up, um, specifically, it was to support programs and activities designed to benefit the town. Mm -hmm. And I have some, you know, and it's by promoting and enhancing community wellness, cultural and historical awareness, environment and wildlife conservation, and economic development. So I'm, I, I know it's such an mm -hmm. important program. Um, <clears throat> And um, improve citizen participation, satisfaction, and sense of place. Can't, and, and I know I'm looking at two, two women who worked with grants before, and I know that you are, you know, trying to. So yeah, I think that's, that's our, probably our stumbling block on this particular application. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Was there anything else I can answer that would help help you? I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I'm looking over here. Keen and Sharon. No, I think they're okay. Well, I, well, thank you very much for considering it. Uh, it pulls at the heartstrings when you think about what we're doing yeah, and the children we're providing, even if it doesn't quite fit the guidelines. And so anything you can do to help, uh, even if it's less money, would be very beneficial to us. So thank you. Larry, did you have something? Well, I was going to ask the same question that Joe asked, but and I had some concerns about this. But when I read the last portion of the purposes for this grant, um, it's it seems to me that it falls in improving citizen participation, satisfaction, and sense of place. You know, we as Seabrook Island residents are supporting our the, the Johns Island community. And so I kind of backed off my, my sense of concern. Yeah, and that's why I questioned the Lance Elementary because that's in North Charleston. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, yeah, I think we're massaging this. Um, well, we can make sure that, we, we can make sure that the thousand dollars you give only goes to John's Island. That's fine. Mm -hmm. We won't buy any food for lambs with this money. We'll, we'll use other money for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're still struggling with it, though. Um, I think it's still outside the scope of what we're supposed but, to do. Yes. I'm going back to the original, and I, wasn't the person who wrote the original um, grant uh, guidelines, etc. But I believe, Joe, that you were involved with Jerry Finke on this one. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe at that time, town council, which I wasn't on, um, 
was, I guess who I was, yes. Um, we're thinking that it would stay within the island. And that mm. that is my stumbling block, is my recall of the history of how this was came about. Um, I believe what had happened is that um, these little individual groups on the island who did things on the island, um, such as uh, the birders or green space, just to mention two, um, were, were coming to the town and asking for little grant, little bits of money. And it seemed best that we set up some sort of program that was official that we could then give them these small grants of money. Am I correct on that show? It was basically set up for inside uh, on the island itself. And I was on the committee last year. Right. And we stuck very close to the guidelines of, of what was proposed for the grant. And that is my memory also, because we were very specific. And then when we rewrote this, we didn't change any mm -hmm. of that wording. Right. So. Yeah, kind of the, the genesis of this was we had over several years, you know, if you had one group or a couple of groups that would kind of get the ear of the mayor or members of council, they'd try to get something. And the budget, there really wasn't any review or any defined process for how the town would consider those types of requests. So um, we had originally intended to set it up in 2019 or 2020, uh, it was budgeted in 19 to start in 2020. And um, to just kind of have an objective way, um, you know, a, a set of criteria uh, and to open it up for any group that wanted to um, uh, request funding from the town. Um, but to have, uh, at first it was a special ad hoc committee. Now, when we reorganized the committees, it was put under the, uh, the purview of this committee. Um, but uh, essentially the, the goal is the same to, to fund projects where, really the, the primary benefit is in the town. Um, I, I think the point was made, and it is a valid point. There is there's language that is included where it, it has kind of more of a generic citizen satisfaction, those type things. And when these criteria were, were written, and, and Jerry and I worked on these for, for quite a while. In fact, I think we were scheduled to take them to the council meeting in March of 2020. Yeah. That was canceled, the first <laughs> meeting that was canceled due to COVID. And um, we, we purposefully kept the criteria fairly broad to give this committee some discretion as to you know, how you feel it, it does or does not meet the criteria. Um, so I know a lot of times that can be frustrating because you want it to be black and white, either it does or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But drafting it that way kind of left uh, you know, left that, that flexibility open that if there was a project that you think you could argue met one or more of those criteria, then, you know, you would have a basis for making a award. Uh, to that. Can I make another suggestion or consideration? Yes, please. We put an ad in the Seabrooker in April, uh, and that cost us $1,200. And that only, you know, that goes to the Seabrookers to, to give them recognition and awareness of the Gorski challenge and the friends of Gorski. So that stays within the Seabrook and it's for Seabrook. Uh, and those volunteers that are part of the, the backpack buddies realize and all the community realize who's given to support this. And so what we could do is channel these funds to that. And those therefore it's only Seabrook and it's to Seabrook and it's Seabrook residents. For the livelihood of Seabrookers. And that stays on the island because that's the people, I guess it's Terry Lash who does the advertising, but that's a Seabrooker yeah. supported paper. Yeah. So. I think Sharon and I are thinking back to a grant we turned down last year because it was spending money for items that we thought and were not appropriately within the island. It was a website um, and a membership. I think an ad falls into that category mm -hmm. too. Um, certainly something for us to discuss. Um, any other questions that we feel like we 
Well, Lynn, thank you for your time. We will vote on this later. We'll have some more discussion for sure. All right. Thank you very much for, for allowing me to come to the board. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda is the Turtle Patrol. Yes, ma'am. Hello. <laughs> I don't have to look at the screen. Okay. I'm Bill Nelson, longtime resident of Subaru, uh, and been on the Turtle Patrol for 15 or 16 years. Wow. We're an unusual organization in that uh, we're not run by local people. We are actually licensed, actually permit by the state Department of Natural Resources. Mm -hmm. We don't have our own rules, we have their rules. Mm -hmm. They guide us completely on how we educate our people, how we train our people. How many people are allowed to do various things amongst the group? So it's very tightly controlled by them. They're not terribly visible within the island, but they are very uh, important in what we do because we follow their instructions religiously. Mm -hmm. We are allowed to do what we do because they give us the permit. If you're familiar with the laws uh, about turtles, you're not supposed to touch them if you're not licensed or permitted. And uh, we're some of the people in our group are permitted to do lots of things and some only in their slice. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm emphasizing this point that we really aren't a separate kind of thing. We're part of the, the state organization, while not state employees, we are very heavily state directed. Mm -hmm. Our job is to optimize the turtle nesting and the turtle production of new turtles on this island. And it's a, a broad set of things we do. We are the, the hands and feet for the state. Uh, we start with uh, having 120 or so uh, volunteers. Uh, there's a change of maybe 15, 20% of those every year, either because they, like me, are getting old or, or maybe because they moved away or whatever, they lost interest, they got hurt or something. So we have a lot of turnover, we have a lot of new people. The state tells us exactly what instruction, what training they have to go through before they can participate. And if you don't go through the training, we don't let you participate. Mm -hmm. uh, we this year have said, if you don't obtain a t-shirt, you don't get to participate because we want you to have a label on you when you walk on, mm -hmm. on the beach. I'll come back to that. It's an important piece of, of uh, our process is having the world know who we are when we're on the beach. Um, we start with patrolling the beach every morning from usually Mother's Day until sometime in September or October, depending on when the turtles quit laying eggs and when they're all hatched. Uh, these are groups of one to four or five and even six people that walk together in one of four different zones. And we patrol the beach all the way from way up at the river on the backside of the camp all the way out to the Kiowa uh, limit from the water that you can't get across without swimming. So those people look for signs that a turtle has visited our island. If they find that, then they ask for help. The help, I'm one of the people that comes back for help. Somebody mentioned uh, Judy Moore. Judy's another one. We each take a day of the week. There are seven groups or seven individuals, sometimes with helpers, that go out and we find the nest. Mm -hmm. That is, they tell us, look, there's a turtle track. We go up to the end of it and see if we can find it with a stick. And it's a very elaborate process. We are heavily trained by the state. I've been trained three times over the years. I didn't learn anything the second or third time. I didn't know <laughs> the first. But, but in fact, we, we find the nest. We stake it at. You see the, the stakes that hold down protection on the nest. You see a sign and such. All of that started part of the state's process. Uh, by which they track these turtle nests. We, when the nest is completely hatched, or at least when we dig it is, we dig it up and we count the number of eggshells and the number of unhatched eggs. And all that stuff in detail gets reported back to the state. And then they publish it generally across the whole state. So it's a part of a, uh, essentially a worldwide, but very much a state of South Carolina, uh, monitoring of and supporting of these nests. One of the things we do is we put these wire covers on them and that keeps the raccoons from digging them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put a smaller mesh underneath them in the last couple of years to keep other critters from getting in, mostly crabs, but some other things. So, mm -hmm. so we're working to make sure that as many of those eggs that get laid wind up being hatched. Mm 
removes 70, 80 percent of the nest to move them up the beach further so they don't get run over by the surf. And if they get hit once, probably won't kill them. If they get hit two, three, four times, the nests essentially spoil and the, and the hatchlings don't get out. So it's very important that we protect these nests. Um, we are, uh, again, all volunteers. We spend money on three major things. One is we report back to the group to keep their interest, to tell them what they did and such. We do that once a year, usually in the fall. We do meet early. Sometimes we may not do much other than training early this year. Uh, but that late meeting is partially supported by the POA, and they've been helping us a lot. They provide vehicle support for us, and they supply some maintenance. And when we have to bury a, a turtle that gets stranded here and dies here, they help us dig holes and such. So the POA has been very helpful and very cooperative with us, and, and to, including uh, adding some funds to support our year end reporting. Uh, we have uh, t shirts we want everybody to wear because we want you to be visible on the beach. We encourage people to get the latest T-shirt. They're going to be coral, and they look great this year. But uh, so the green ones are gone. <laughs> they're gone. Coral well, sounds nice. By, by, uh, we have asked the, the members to pay for those shirts. Historically, not always, but historically, most of it done it that way. And then the last thing we spend money on is the things we need to secure those nests. That may be the wire that goes over them. It may be the stakes. It may be the signposts, it may be the, the materials we use to mark them, you know, bright ribbon, it may be the pins we use to write on the ribbons and such. So we have a set of supplies we supply to our, our members or our patrol people, and we have to buy all those. Historically, those things collectively have been about $800. I'm the treasurer, I've been the treasurer, seems like forever. <laughs> and it's pretty consistently that. This year we expect it to be quite a bit more because uh, Kiwa experimented last year with providing plastic rather than the wire nest covers. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff we stick on top. And the state thinks that's a good idea. And Kiwa thought it was a good idea and we're close to the Kiwa group. And uh, so we, we're planning on replacing them. We expect to spend a lot more money on those covers this year. Usually, you know, a third of the, of the wires get replaced. This year, we're going to try to replace all of them. That's the intent. And so that's a big, big piece of this. We have the normal replacement plus the cost of the new for the ones that wouldn't be just replacing. Um, so we, we have uh, beach supplies. We have heavy beach supplies with the new nesting protection. And that's what we're looking for from this grant. Uh, the other two things. Uh, We'll cover the t-shirts with our member contributions this year. It's already been done. We were ordered yesterday. <laughs> the the year-end meeting, which will be in like October, uh, we'll get about 50% of what it costs supported by the POA, and we'll figure out how to support it otherwise. We do get some, some donations by people who visit mm -hmm. the beach. Now, the question of why does Seabrook care? When our people walk the beach every morning, one of the major uh, things that cause turtles to not succeed is trash on the beach. Our people pick up every piece of trash they can lift or find as they walk the beach. We have the cleanest beaches in all of Charleston. Yeah. Uh, and we do that because these people pick them up. Most groups pick up one or two bags of trash in their <coughs> walk on a fourth of the beaches. Uh, and we take them back and dump them in the POA. Uh, so quick, well, sort of many cases since I live on the beach, I think I'm back and forth with my trash, but uh, we get them off the beach and get them away from things. That protects the turtles and it makes it a more pleasant place for our tourists. I think the most important thing we do is we are maybe in entertainment, maybe in education, certainly both of those things, and we're a draw. Mm -hmm. We have people come up and ask us when is going to be the best week in next summer for turtle hatchings because we want to come and watch a hatch and we want to come and watch you deal with them. It is not unusual when we do an inventory of the nest to have 100 people on the beach watching us. We have a group of three or four people in our education team that carries pictures and such, and they go out and lecture this group about how long does it take them to hatch, how many are in the group, but the, the whole story for mm -hmm. the turtles. And so we have some materials for them, but that's not a big deal. That's, 
That's a piece of what we do. So we're educating the public. Most of our visitors, but a lot of them are locals. Mm -hmm. Locals, if they've heard it, usually don't sit past the second or third meeting, but, <laughs> but they do. But a lot of them come out and watch, take pictures and such. So uh, we are a draw for, for tourism. A lot of people tell you this is their turtle uh, vacation spot as opposed <laughs> to their vacation spot. And, you, and you'd be surprised at how many that's the case. Uh, us wearing the t-shirts and we come back to that. Um, I walk that beach with, with my wife and a couple of ladies uh, once a week. It is very unusual. I don't get at least three or four people stop me on the beach and ask me questions. Mm -hmm. And all of the groups have the same experience. Uh, and they ask good questions and they're conservation kinds of questions. So we're looking for. We believe from the statistics that we're doing a great job of improving the turtles that uh, are hatched out of here. Uh, there's no really good information about how the turtles tread over time, what, you know, what eats them in the ocean, what eats them before they get off the beach and such. We know from watching that birds and Mm -hmm. and crabs and mostly raccoons, but, but some other things uh, do get along the beach. But uh, <coughs> we don't know what happens after they leave the beach. Our job is to get them in the water and far enough out, I can't see them anymore and then we're done. So uh, we think we're matching almost everything on the list of things. Uh, and uh, we're not asking for things that aren't directly related to those turtles getting out to the ocean. I just have curiosity questions here. Pest deterrent sensors, what, what exactly? The major, the major pest on the beach is a raccoon. Okay. We have these little black boxes that you'll see sometimes around nests. Okay. And if raccoons are bothering nests in that area, look these black boxes out and they'll sense and they'll make a sound that hopefully scares some of the raccoons away. <laughs> And so we'll know if raccoons are catching those next. Now we can tell by tracks also, but this is part of how we we convince the, the predators not to go after them. I was, you know, I was asking. And we buy because... a bunch of those every year to okay. replace the ones that are wear now. Okay, because it didn't seem like enough money, and I was, but now I realize that you you only put them on nests where you're seeing some markings right. to indicate that they're looking. That's there. right. Yeah, usually um, we can get by with a couple of groups on the island. And the last one, last question is the lights out, publication signs, etc. cetera. Um, are you replacing signs that are already existing or, or do you hand people publications? Do you have a hand? There's, there's a, there are cards, there are magnets that you can put in the refrigerator that okay. say lights out. Uh, there are some small signs that we carry around sometimes like in inventories and such. Uh, that we don't have any permanent signs on the island. I don't know if we could get agreement to do them if we did, uh, but there's pretty good cooperation with particularly the POA on that side. Yeah, usually they're, they're signs, they have a set there of signs. There are a few around, yeah. yes. Those were my questions. And uh, are there materials that are put in packets of renters that come so they have? There are not. Um, we uh, we do have little cards that we pass out that have some of the lights out messages and some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, we just bought 500 of them, I know, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, they're handed out out on the beach. The uh, We have a number of uh, cross uh, organization people uh, with the dolphin folks and uh, uh, they're out there handing out the dolphin stuff. They're also handing out turtle control stuff. And our walkers will all have a group. I have about 20 of them in my, my go bag for the, the beach days. If somebody asks any questions, we try to give them one of those. Point them at our website, which is fairly complete story about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Joe's looking for the information packet that goes out. I'm pretty sure, Joe, you put that in there. Yeah, it's towards the end. While they're looking for that, I have just a curiosity, also a curiosity question, which I probably know the answer to, but um, at the end of each season, all of these wire bases and the wire tops, I assume that part of the job is to pick all that stuff up at the end of every season out of every nest. There's a party at somebody's house. <laughs> <laughs> we try to hammer them out and clean them up, and then somebody volunteers to let them be in their garage. 
Okay. I assume, I assume, assume that was the answer, but so I just- It was uh, easy to do in Japan to surrender because they have a big, big house, had a big house and, and uh, they kept them in their garage. Some of them are in uh, Jane, the current leader in her condo has a little room downstairs and uh, there's a couple other people in volunteer space. Okay. So Is, it's has Kiowa had any issues with uh, the plastic Trying out the plastic pieces, uh, are, do they tend to stay in place as well as the wire? I'm thinking of plastic drifting out and they report good experiences. Okay. That's as far as I can go. Okay, I haven't talked to them. Uh, one of Mike Vincent, I don't know if any of you know mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Mike, Mike is uh, head of that project that he's been talking to him about, okay. and he's trying to figure out where he's going to buy the parts. We think these will be standard hardware parts that we'll probably get at Home Depot or some other similar okay. place. It'd be interesting to see how that works out for them. Yeah, that would be uh, most of us at the end of the season have scratches and such. Those yeah. wires are awful. Mm -hmm. And since I'm one of the guys that goes out and services the nest, I put them on the back of my electric vehicle and take them out. Yeah. Or Linda and I beat up a lot by well, handling that stuff. And just, just working that, that wire, um, having built a bunch of nests to go around our cages to go around plants. Really ruin your thumbs too. Yeah, <laughs> so just just as an FYI, the question was asked if the information is given to uh, renters. Um, when our short-term rental ordinance was adopted uh, in 2020, December, December of 2020, um, council put a requirement that um, the owner or manager of all short-term rental properties by ordinance has to provide um, either in advance of the renter coming when they check in or keep a copy in the unit at all times, mm -hmm. um, a short-term rental information packet. And we do have, Catherine had pulled it up on the screen. Um, so we have a, a couple of pages in there with some wildlife do's and don'ts. And we do have uh, one section specific to um, sea turtles. And we had pulled some information, I think from the turtle patrol um, website and from DNR kind of things not to do, particularly lighting and holes, mm -hmm. and holes on the beach and those type of things. Right. So, uh, who to call? Span standard set of those suggestions. Yeah. We don't publish anything that we give it, but mm -hmm. yeah. So that that is something that every rental property is required by ordinance to provide to Good. every yeah. renter. We, to we lots of us know about those packages. And we have regular debates about what percentage of people ever even open the back. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so we, we find that uh, a lot of this education happens because I got the shirt on and somebody asks me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually, if I talk to one person, if they're three or three walking by, they'll all join. <laughs> so I'm often talking to two, three, four, or six people mm -hmm. on the beach. Mm -hmm. And the kids are the most uh, uh, avid listeners. Of so course. Yeah. Just, in awe of what we're talking about. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a great great group of people, but I think you no just, you know, what you do is just amazing. Mm. Getting up at that hour every single morning. Just, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> some, some of us who designed the process, and I was one of the key players in that, because we fixed it. So you only have to get up once to be a walker, and you'll have to get up once to be what we call first responder. <laughs> and some others have thought we should do seven days a week. That's it, not no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so it's one, one time a week. Twice for me. Okay. Once to walk and once for, for service guests. Yes, since like mm -hmm. we call first responder. Prober is another term we use. That yeah. implies yeah. sticking yeah. the sticking oh, around. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's great. It's wonderful. I don't have any questions about the grant application as it relates to our guidelines. I don't either. Mm -hmm. Larry, me, any, okay. Well, we really thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bill. Yeah, thank I know something else comes up. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Moving on, we now have the Seabrook Island Village Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Uh, we currently do not have a representative. Okay. I'm sorry, what did you say? We don't There's have no representative. Okay. We don't have a representative. Barbara didn't show up at the exchange club meeting last night. So. <laughs> Everybody's okay. Um, thank you, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. 
if if you do want to ask questions and get a presentation from them before taking a vote, I think we have at least one other one other one yeah. came in. So we'll have at least one more on the agenda for the next meeting. So if you want okay. to this one over and give them an opportunity to come, we, we can do that. And that goes the same for uh, bicycles for humanity. Ms. Penn is in here. She okay. Um, well, I don't know how the feel. I'll ask the group. I'll ask you all. How do you feel? Do you feel we need to have a presentation um, for the Supervillain Village neighbors helping neighbors, or I can address the bicycles for humanity. <clears throat> they uh, submitted a grant last year, or yeah. And th this is just such a wonderful mm -hmm. project. And this young woman, uh, I think she's in college now, isn't she? Is she, I don't know whether she graduated last year or? She's either in the last year. That's, she's either high a senior, school. yeah. Yeah. Because she did a wonderful presentation. And, and this is just a Herculean effort that she takes on to do this. And the problem we had last year was it didn't conform to how the grant was specified. Yeah. And it, it was kind of hard to turn her down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because it was, it was very hard. And, and I thought she did a really good job once again of explaining how it helps our community by getting the bikes out. <laughs> right. But once again, you know, a lot of them would just wind up on Brown and White Day, I guess, being picked up. Um, but yeah, I, I, as you said, Sharon, we, we struggled with this and then turned it down only because mm -hmm. we couldn't fit mm -hmm. in that criteria again. Um, so I, I, whether I would ask her to come in because I think we could, you know, after reading it over, make that decision. I don't know what she could tell us that would make any difference to what we had decided a year ago. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Some, somebody said something about if there were bicycles for Brown and White Day that somebody would come by and pick those up yes. and take them to her house yes. yeah is and, that yeah on and tide lines every time we they run we because i'm one of the editors every time that runs about run and wipe up there is a little paragraph in there mm -hmm. saying if you have a bicycle please contact them and they'll mm -hmm. come and pick it up mm -hmm. rather than put it in the trash um she she's just uh one in a million. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, she's, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's an, it, an incredible project. Um, yeah. and, but I, I don't see how it fits within the guidelines. I don't either. I'm having, I, I, we didn't last year. And I, when I saw it again, I was sort of surprised. Um, but then again, if you don't ask, you don't receive. So yeah. that's true. Um, I commend her for making an effort. And, and we did send the application to everyone who applied last year, regardless of whether they were whether they received funding. Or received funding or not, right? Um, but it's kind of a courtesy notice. You know, it, it, it gives me pause to think that maybe the town should have different type of grant for. I don't know. But th th this isn't even. This is even local, and I think that's where we really mm -hmm. stumble mm -hmm. all over the place. Right. Um, so, I mean, uh, my feeling is that I, I would ask her to come, but I don't think it's going to change our decision at all. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I can't. I, we, we did try to make a good case, but it's still not really within the town limits. I would like to hear from someone from uh, the like that that I know know someone. Just, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was sort of surprised what they were asking for. So I think I would like to 
Mm. Because I, as it stands, um, I, I have I have questions about how it stands. As yeah. it stands, mm -hmm. um, uh, as to it, it appears that it's requesting funds to benefit a, a small group of people, um, as opposed to something that's larger to the community in general. And I just I wonder about that. Yeah. And a small group, meaning the group, that this is to pay for, you know, strength balance classes. Exactly. It's not, it's. Yes, so know, something that the Lake House typically provides classes. Yeah, at a very nominal nature. fee. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how is this different? Yeah. Um, uh, I think there are a variety of things that the, that, um, the Secret Adam Village Group does that, um, Perhaps would fall within a parameter, yeah. but I'm not sure about this particular. Yeah, and that ha that happened to us last year with Green Space, mm -hmm. and we we talked to them about it, and they came back with another application that that was asking for funding for things that we could basically um, <clears throat> see. So yeah, I'm I'm with you on this. So that we can hold this one off and and have mm -hmm. him come. Okay. Or someone, a representative, come to our next meeting. That would be great. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, looking at the four that we have, we'll go through them. Before you do that, now that you are all official committee members, we would be remiss if we didn't um, just state for the record um, as a voting member of the committee, if anyone has a conflict of interest um, with any of these groups that have requested funding, if you're uh, a member of the board or something like that. Um, you're just need to declare that. I think we have the recusal forms here. If anyone does have uh, a conflict of interest, we just ask that you uh, recuse yourself from voting on that item. And then um, we can have you fill out one of these forms. But if you don't have any conflicts, then- um, How deep to... is a conflict? I mean, knowing somebody and being a friend of someone no. is not a conflict. I mean, you, you would have like some, you know, financial mm -hmm. interest or the group that you have a direct relationship, you know, could benefit financially from your vote. So if you're a, a board member or something like that, um, then I would definitely, uh, or an officer, or, you know, somehow involved with that organization. Um, I think just, just being a member may not necessarily disqualify you. Um, but if you have a financial interest, we would always advise to, um, to exercise caution. And even if it looks like it could be improper to err on the side of recusing. I, I was on the board with backpack buddies, but I'm no longer on the board. Yeah, if you're not anymore, you have no issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it would be a very close tie to the organization and not just and, and a I, volunteering. I just, I just bring that up because it's such a small town and everybody kind sure. of is, you know, involved in a lot of different groups and things. So but, uh, if nobody has any conflicts, then nothing to worry about. So just the fact that Sharon helps pack things for backpack buddies or, or mm -hmm. somebody and works on it. That's only occasionally. Okay. okay. You're kind of a volunteer, you know, or you worked with Turtle Patrol, but yeah. you were one of the turtlers, I guess. I or know. if you had a business and this group was contracting with your business or something like that, okay. then then yeah, that would be a conflict. But you know, volunteering or something like that, that's that's not an issue. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll move on and um, we'll take them one at a time. Um, and the first one I'd like to look at would be the um, the Seabrook Island birders. Um, and I will First call for a motion and then we can have a discussion, but I'll call for a motion for the approval of the community promotion grant for the Seabrook Island birders. Um, no, I, I move that we approve the amended uh, request from uh, Seabrook Island birders for a total of $1,500. I second that. Okay. Do we have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding this? Mm -mm. No discussion? I don't hear any discussion. Hearing none, I uh, now call for a vote for approval. Um, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 So I think that was unanimous. 
So we have unanimously, unanimously approved. And that brings us to Backpack Buddies. Um, right then, I will call for a motion for approval of the Community Promotion Grant application by Backpack Buddies Seabrook Island. Um, I move to move to approve. Two second. Second. Okay. Do we have any discussion? I didn't hear what she said. She moved to approve. Simply uh, that opens it up yeah, for discussion. That's just for discussion. So we can have a discussion yeah. on it. Right. Um, I, as an official as this is, I just don't see how it fits in our guidelines. Um, and and I'm, I'm just trying to pull anything mm -hmm. in. Um, yeah, I'm sure it does give people satisfaction, but they could also just write a check and be satisfied too. So I'm not really sure. Um, I think it's an organization on the island that no one would want to go away. But as it stands, their financial base is pretty solid. I mean, okay. there's, there's a lot of support. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, I don't think anybody questions the value of the, of the organization mm -hmm. or, or the effort, um, it, the cause that it is supporting. Um, but within the guidelines, um, I, don't, I just don't see how. Yes, how we can fit this works. in. I, I don't, I'm having problems too. Um, Larry, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, no, I, I expressed them before. Um, you know, it, it does, <clears throat> I think it does uh, encourage citizen participation, satisfaction, maybe a sense of, of place. Uh, but I now understand better um, the prior, the previous uh, determinations uh, as to exactly what the rules, the purpose means. And I, I'm probably more comfortable that this, this really doesn't, um, doesn't fit in with the promotion grant purposes yeah sorry to say yeah, yeah. I, I think we're all sorry to say yeah. this mm -hmm. um, so now joe i'm gonna have to go to you for a second do i now call for a vote on yeah. this and we okay yeah the, um, the motion is to approve okay um so if you vote yes then you are voting to approve, approve right if you vote no then you're voting that's was it a second no, we haven't haven't done it yet. Oh, I just okay. wanted to make sure uh, that I was in line with this. Okay. Um, having had our discussion, um, has any? I'd like to call for um, a vote. Um, all in favor, please say aye. And um, all against or not in favor, say nay. Is nay. that how we should do it? Okay. Nay. Okay. So I call for a vote. Nay. Nay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we have unanimously um, turned down this application with regrets. I mean, yes. with regrets. <laughs> And I, I, I think we should add for anyone that, you know, if you submit an application and it does not get approved for not meeting the criteria or, or for the, the group not feeling that it meets the criteria, um, that doesn't preclude a group if they have another project from resubmitting mm -hmm. um, something that may meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we had that last year mm -hmm. in yes. Green Space. Yeah. The first one didn't get approved. They had another project which kind of more closely aligned with the criteria. They resubmitted that one, did get approved. So uh, anyone who does not receive funding um, through a, a first attempt, that doesn't preclude you if you have another project that that is closer aligned with the criteria from, from resubmitting. 
Um, okay, we will move on to the Seabrook Island Turtle Patrol. So at this point, I call for a motion for the approval of the community promotion grant um, from the Seabrook Island Turtle Patrol. I'll we'll make a motion. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, thank you both. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns regarding this application? Mm -mm. Okay, hearing none, um, I now call for a vote of approval of the Seabrook Island Turtle Patrol application for the Community Promotions Grant. Uh, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 That was unanimous. So. And I, I feel like we've discussed um, the Bicycles for Humanities, and I don't feel that we need to bring her in. Um, so I am going to call for a motion for approval of the Community Promotions Grant application uh, for the Bicycles for Humanity. Do we have a motion for approval so we can discuss it? No approval. Okay, so I guess well, this so is... we need to dispose it of the agenda. So somebody should make a motion. Right. You have to, you're not committing to vote right. one way or another. You're it's just the same as making the other a motion one. to put it yeah. on the table. Right. So we have to make a motion. Is there a motion to put this on the table? Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. So let's have comments, questions, and concerns regarding this application. Um, I think we've discussed it, but we will, for the record. Basically, um, though this is a wonderful um, activity and um, it certainly is commendable, we have a problem, or I have a problem basically of fitting it into the criteria that we have set up for these grants. Um, so my feeling is that it, although it is a great um, endeavor, I just, it, we, we just don't have a place to fit it at this point in time in this grant. Right. True. Okay. Any other comments? Anybody else here say okay? Um, okay, now I will call for a vote of approval. Please signify your approval by saying aye. Or if you are not approving, please say nay. Nay. Okay. Nay. 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 Unfortunately, and you know, but once again, commend this activity. Um, it just does not fit into the guidelines of this particular grant. So, as far as where we are, we started today with a pot of seventy five hundred. There were two approvals voted on: one for the burgers for fifteen hundred, one for the turtle patrol for a thousand. So that commits a total of twenty five hundred. Um, so we'll still have five thousand. Um, remaining mm -hmm. from this year's uh, appropriation. Um, next meeting, we have um, the Neighbors Helping Neighbors request for 1500 Okay. And we also, is it Keepers of the Wild, mm -hmm. I think? Yes, the Keepers of the Wildlife Sanctuary, and they're also asking for 1500 So we'll have two. We'll have two. Okay. Expect okay. to have two on the next agenda. Okay. What the the new one is neighbors. called? Keepers of we're the Wild. We're not doing it. We're going to do it next time. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. going to, we're, we're we preferring. Yeah, we this. want someone, we want to have okay. someone come yeah. in and right. talk to us about it. Yes. And, and there may be others that come in between now. And now right. and we'll, then. We'll have, expect to have at least two on the agenda. Okay. And will the second round of applications stop on April 15th? I mean, we just collect okay. them. We just collect them as they come in. If so they get if, in before the agenda, we put them on. Yeah. And if, and then if there's like a formal deadline for second round and stuff. Oh, you mean, well, we'll put them on the agenda. You, we need them two days ahead of time, basically. So if anybody's listening, that would be the 15th, <laughs> maybe the 14th, have to be in by the 14th so you can, we can get them on the 15th. Um, just two other things very quickly. Um, disaster Awareness Day is, we don't have a calendar date for that, but we are going to be 
doing it. And this committee basically has very little to do with it because it's Kiowa's turn to do the Disaster Awareness Day. And they are basically going to take care of any kind of publications. All we have to do is get the word out. Um, and so um, put that on our agenda next time of different ways that we can to be thinking about it, different ways that we can let people know. We don't have the exact date, but we're pretty sure it's going to be in June. Um, and it would be over at there, I call it the new facility, but it's not that new. It's the conference center that they built a couple of years ago. Um, and so um, they're working on putting them together for the two communities. Um, and there'll be a lunch involved, I believe. So. That's always a draw. Well, that's, I mean, well, I go and just think of Jean and one of our meetings say, oh, you, we went for the lunch. That's so, right. You know, we just did have the lunch. And so, so um, yeah, we, we had met with them. And then um, before you before you leave that, um, as we're thinking about advertising, obviously they're going to have an advertising campaign. Yeah. So we'll know that. Yeah. Maybe the next week. And they have, I mean, they have someone who does advertising for them. So, okay. um, you know, they have a public relations sort of department over there. But they'll probably, so they'll probably cover the, the usual. The usual. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. kind of stuff. All that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we basically have, you know, probably the Seabrooker uh, and Tidelines. Yeah. 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 And our website. So okay. it's not, it's not going to be a big. But it isn't, a, I know that was out there in my mind, what, how we were, what our responsibility was going to be. And it's relief to know that they're taking it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so we should all go and then we'll learn. Yeah, we'll learn. Exactly. We'll get lunch. Yeah, then <laughs> we'll all get lunch and next year we'll decide what we want to do over here. Um, Joe, do you want to say anything else about that? Because I know you were in on that meeting. Uh, it'll be in June. We just don't know what they yeah. okay. sometime. And um, I know the last time we met, we had a quick um, overview of that community information publication. It was really the, the maze of K's we looked at, Kiowa had put out on their town mm -hmm. website, right. all this mm -hmm. information. Right. Um, and Joe and I had a conversation all real briefly about it. And we thought that it would be appropriate for our town to do something similar. Uh -huh. But our town is a little busy right now and we don't have a PR for a PR person. So what we're going to do is probably put this off until the summer, sometime in July, um, when the town is done with all of our licensing and permitting and everything. And we have a little breathing room. So between um, this meeting and our next meeting, I, I, the information that I gave you, I think pretty much covers who does what. It's now, there's a few little other, if you looked at the maze of Ks, they also had little things that maybe you didn't know about this is this group or that group. And, um, you know, maybe we can, we can start thinking about what we want written in there. But the other is, is pretty much already taken care of. And it appears both on the um, property owner's website, it appears on the Tideline's website. So it seems appropriate that we put something out there. My hope would be that it would be a two page print front and back document that if anybody wanted to print, <laughs> they could put out there, you know, they could print it and um, put it at their unit or whatever. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple form. Um, and we have this information in various places, but it seems appropriate that maybe we just put a dedicate one page on the website to this. Um, and we'll talk more about it. I know that I've kept you all for way long um, and I do miss that clock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it was something we can think about. And if we do want to proceed with it um, sometime in the summer, we'll pick it up again and okay. look at it and make a decision whether or not we think this is a worthy thing to have on our website. Um, meanwhile, you, if you are not familiar with the town's website, please take a little time um, and look at all the information that is out there because there is a lot of information. Um, and I know that 
um, in this meeting, when we were talking about the Turtle Patrol, um, we brought up the publication that is by ordinance supposed to be in every unit or given to every renter. And, you know, you can lead them to the publication, but you can't make them yeah. read it. That's so that's, I mean, that's just our, our biggest problem, I guess, exactly. is trying to get them. Well, I ask a little um, question. Yeah. Maybe you might have picked it up. The, the gentleman who did the presentation for the, um, and this is just for the minutes, the presentation uh, on the, uh, the birders, it was not the, he said he was the writer of it, but Robert Mercer. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other concerns or questions for Jay? Mm -hmm. Okay, with that being said, um, do I have a motion to adjoin, adjourn, the join, adjoin, <laughs> adjoin the meeting? I am from New York. Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. Yes. Long Island. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I, I did that. <laughs> you did, you Ms. Carter did, did that. You did it already? <laughs> okay. Do I have a second? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can adjourn the meeting then. <laughs>